Hello, everybody. My name is Amr Asher. I'm the Assistant Director of Research at the Berkman Klein Center and part of the Secretariat of the Global Network of Internet and Society Centers. Today, I'm so pleased to be in conversation uh, with my friend and longtime colleague, Juan Carlos de Martin, who is the co-founder of the Nexus Center for Internet and Society at the Politecnico di Torino. He's also the Vice Rector of the University. And today he'll be talking with us, um, not only about the work of the Nexus Center, but also about a really amazing um, set of conversations, events, and a community building festival that he's been <coughs> organizing called the Biennial Tecnologica at the Politecnico di Torino. So we'll talk a little bit about both the Nexus Center and the Biennial today. And before we get started, Juan Carlos, would you just like to briefly introduce yourself? Sure, thank you, Amar. It's a pleasure to, to have this conversation with you. Um, I'm a computer engineering professor at the Polytechnic of Turin, and therefore I have, a, I have a technical background, and I still occasionally teach technical matters. But for the past uh, now almost 20 years, I've been interacting with uh, law professors, economists, uh, philosophers, etc., trying to understand digital issues, so trying to understand the technology that I contributed to develop in a broader sense, so trying to understand the impact on society of these technologies and also to understand how to shape them for the benefit of society. So that, that's, I think it would be in a nut nutshell how I just would describe myself. Excellent, thank you Juan Carlos. So to get us started, I would love to hear a little bit more about the Nexus Center and its, um, its history, how it came about and what it focuses on. And I know it's one that has been in the network of centers as a founding member member since the network was launched about eight or nine years ago. And you've done so much work, as you've mentioned, with collaborators within the network itself. But we'd love to hear a little bit more about the center and then also um, how that has led you to the work of the festival. Sure. Um, first of all, let me say that uh, you already mentioned that I'm at, at the Polytechnic. Polytechnic is a, the European word for a, for a technical university like MIT and many others also in the US. And so it's a technical university in the sense that we have mostly engineering, then we have architecture, a little bit of design, and not much else. So it's not a, a universal university, as uh, some people say. Um, and therefore, um, we have like 80% of the university that is actually devoting their time in teaching technology and uh, crafting new technology. And uh, actually, there is legal thinking historically about uh, uh, a sort of reflection on what we do. We just do it. There is not so much a uh, tradition of thinking about what we actually do in a meta level kind of sense. So what are we doing? What is the role of technology in society, et cetera, et cetera. We just, we just develop the technology, like I guess in many other technical schools. And so the Nexus Center uh, was born uh, 14 years ago and it was born um, because of a direct interaction actually with the Berkman's Center for Internet and Society at Harvard University that uh, came to Torino in 2005 and um, delivered a one week um, uh, lectures and, and classes. And uh, we were, uh, me and other people in Turin, we were struck by this um, thinking about technology with a wider perspective. So not only from the point, to point of view of law, but you know, I would, even though at the time was, you know, law school, Berkman, Berkman Center was based at the law school, still there was, it was not just strictly the law, there was a, a broader vision of technology. And therefore we were inspired by that. And together with, um, with my co-founder and my current, my co-director, who was a law professor, Mark Ricolfi, we decided to, to follow the example. And so we, we borrowed the title, Internet and Society. We came, up, we came up with a new name, Nexa, which means the connected things in Latin. And, uh, and we started with our own background in a different setting to, to emulate what we were so impressed uh, by this experience with, um, with the Berkman Center here in Turin. And, uh, and so we started with a strong component uh, of engineering represented by myself and other people and a strong component of um, uh, law because my co-founder was a law professor and more specifically was a, an intellectual property professor. Even though Marco is a, is a huge uh, culture, truly almost a universal Renaissance man in his uh, knowledge of many different topics from philosophy to economics, still he's a law professor. So we started uh, uh, with a strong um, characterization as a, 
technology and law, if you wish. And then over time in this, you know, 14 years now, over time we, um, we uh, broaden our base. So we still have a pretty strong law component of fellows and other people collaborating with us, but we definitely have more philosophy, more economics, uh, um, different kinds of technology. And so now it's, uh, even though we're still not covering all the discipline, which is in, simply impossible, we have slowly increased our scope in a sense. And, um, and just recently, just one year ago, actually the Nexus Center, uh, it was a contributing factor in establishing uh, a new broader center between the Polytechnic and the University of Turin called Scienza Nuova, the new science, uh, which is sort of co-founded by the Nexus Center and by um, philosophy center at the University of Turin. And uh, it was just started when COVID broke out. So, so essentially we're still in the infancy. But still it is a good example of how we slowly uh, involve more and more people. And now we have this new larger home crossing two different universities. The University of Turin is a generalist university. So they cover essentially all the topics, almost all the topics. So it, it, that's another conversation that was that we get uh, from the Nexus Center. And, um, uh, what uh, the focus in the, this 14 years has been uh, uh, a lot on knowledge in the digital age, uh, connected with the fact that we had a strong intellectual property component. So copyright issues at the European level, at the national level, we still do, we still follow. Like right, right now, for instance, we are worried about the reception at the, in the Italian legislation of the European Directive on Copyright, uh, which is not going as well as we wished. And also in other countries is not going to increase exceedingly well. Um, and so we cared about software patents. Uh, so the typical you know, issues at the, at the boundary between digital technology and uh, intellectual property. Um, but over time, we also tackled, for instance, uh, freedom of expression, which incidentally is going to be the topic of the annual conference of the Nexus Center in December, because we feel that uh, like many other people that uh, freedom of expression is shrinking and shrinking and shrinking also in, in very worrying ways. And so we will uh, devote uh, a couple of days uh, uh, to talk about that. And um, that, I don't want to make a long list, but let me just mention something, at least one technical project, which was uh, a project that um, we followed for a few years, which was, was Newbot, which was a, a software that was measured to, I mean, was developed to measure, to try to get some information about natural neutrality back in the days when network neutrality was a very hotly con contested topic. And so there was software development essentially, and, uh, but with a policy perspective. So trying to give some evidence about what was going on on, on the net since it was mostly opaque. So in a nutshell, this could be a, a very short and partial presentation on what, um, of what this next center is all about. So thank you for that amazing overview. And for me, it also really connects a lot of the dots on why the Nexus Center has been involved in that network of centers, but also is an exemplar of a network of center center, precisely because you started from a very interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary place. And although each of you, you and your co-founder may have specific disciplines that you were coming out of, it was this mindset, this thinking and this approach where creating spaces for interdisciplinary work to happen really has allowed you to both learn about different types of fields and engage in these different fields and share information and knowledge, not only within the context of the Nexus Center, but now in the context of this new center, which even is, is new to me. So I'm so glad to have <laughs> learned about it and um, really to hear that the, that the, that the University of um, the Politecnico di Torino is really investing in not only its core um, set of areas of study, but that you do need to think about broader impacts on society. You have to think about not only what you're building, but why you're building it as well, and what the approach is to doing this, and that you can draw from the multitude of disciplines across um, academic spaces and work across sectors as you try to inform policy from the evidence that you're that you're building through research or through building technology. So I really, I really um, love that as a narrative, and also the fact that the Politecnico di Torino is an engineering school. It's a technical school. And these technical facilities are very much ones that I think are not as well represented in, in sort of humanities and legal spaces. And the same is true for the for vice versa, um, the opposite. Exactly. So thank you, thank you for that overview. I'd love to hear a little bit more about um, what you're doing now. So what is your current 
work like? What are the plans that you have? I know in the short term, there's this, this festival that's going on right, right now, I believe. And then also- on Thursday, uh, yes. Very, yes, almost right now. Uh, and then um, what you have over, planned for the next year and what you're excited about. Right. Um, so what we, if I can tell a few words about my uh, recent activities and for the past two years and a half, um, as you mentioned, I'm vice director for culture and communication here at the Polytechnic of Turin. And um, what, I, what I saw was um, taking the approach uh, that started you know, 15 years ago with that first interaction with the Bertman Center um, of thinking about technology and society. So for many years, it was digital technologies and society. Now this approach, uh, this very same paradigm brought uh, um, at one level up of abstraction. So technology and society. So not, only, not necessarily only digital technology, but technology uh, to cool. So energy, transportation, you name it. Um, and so uh, since also because now I have a university position, therefore I'm not you know, vice rector for digital culture or digital technology, but broadly representing the university. And that also aligns with my own interest because after you know many years now thinking about digital technologies, I started asking myself, uh, but is it the thinking that we have devoted to digital technologies, is there something um, that is so specific about digital or does it apply also to technology more generally? And actually, of course, digital technologies have some specific nature and features, but at the same time, many of the thinking, especially regarding policy, but also societal impact is actually applies also to all technology. And therefore, um, I've been devoting time to try to foster a conversation, a network of centers like conversation, if you wish, but not only on digital technologies, but on technology in general. And um, uh, therefore, last year we organized, uh, it was the 160th anniversary of the university. And therefore we made, we decided to make a big party and the big party was a big cultural initiative, but also with shows, concerts and everything, all the fun stuff that happened before COVID um, that took place exactly one year ago. And it was called the Festival of Technology and Society. And uh, with a hunch that there could be interest in our students, in citizens, uh, in the general, in general audience uh, about talking about technology with this kind of approach. So talking about technology, not purely in a strictly technological sense, so not celebrating the latest devices, uh, not the usual you know, innovation kind of uh, discourse, but in a more critical, in a more detached, uh, involving humanists and sociologists and geographers and philosophers and, and even writers um, and artists. And uh, so we hoped that it was going to be attractive for our general audience. And actually we had a, a huge, uh, let me say it, a huge success because we had 50,000 people that came uh, and attended uh, and, and essentially all the meetings were sold out. Actually it was entirely for free, but I mean, were, it was packed. And uh, we, had, we, we had the pleasure of seeing our own students coming Sunday morning to attend lectures, uh, which was not, ex it was not a given. So we, we, were, we hoped that they would come, but it was not certainly a given. And so based on that success, so we decided together with the mayor of the city and other institutions, uh, to make it a permanent uh, exhibition, to a permanent initiative, sorry. So to make it a Biennale, so every two years. And, uh, but essentially every two years, a major cultural initiative on technology and society with the approach that I just described, which is the first edition is going to take place starting on Thursday. It, was, it will be entirely online and uh, a sizable chunk of it, it will be in English. And so actually it will be accessible to also audience all over the world, which is the, one of the few positive sides uh, of moving everything online is that then the audience is the entire world I mean, potentially. And so we're going to have many meetings on digital issues. And I think it is going to be interesting for both the network of centers, but also for the general public, also for the internet in the IGF uh, kind of public. We're going to talk about artificial intelligence. We're going to talk about uh, uh, tracking applications for this pandemic and many other digital topics. But we're going to also talk about uh, many, many other technology related issues, including, as I mentioned, the arts. So we're, we're going to listen to novelists talking about technology. We're going to listen to have uh, concerts uh, 
where somehow the technology plays a part uh, and not just an instrumental part, but somehow it's the object of the artistic performance. And it's going to be 140 events uh, and roughly 260 speakers. And, um, and we hope that uh, we will, even though it will be entirely different compared to the edition, the physical, very physical edition that we had uh, last November, it will be entirely online, but we still hope that it's going to have the same kind of attractive uh, features uh, for the uh, general audience. Wow, the scale of that, both in terms of the volume of people and interest, but also in terms of the scope of what you're trying to do is really, truly amazing. And I think also speaks to the fact that, as you were saying, you're vice rector of culture at the university and digital is culture now, right? All these sort of questions of technology and society are very much integrated into how we think about almost every issue from a societal perspective, whether it be policy making or art or, um, production of knowledge, all these things very much have such important digital components. And for somebody who's been in this field for, for two decades, you've seen that. And I know that you've also um, really looked at this from the perspective of universities and the role that universities play in, in both creating and promoting culture and knowledge. You've even written a book on universities in cyberspace and we've done a lot of work in the past on universities in cyberspace. So I might wonder, I wonder if you might just say one thing about that work and how it connects to the, to the festival. No, absolutely. Thank you for mentioning that. Um, uh, this festival, this Biennale, um, is um, uh, one of the ways in which um, universities can have, have an impact on society. And so in Italy, we tend to talk about the three missions of university, then you can, you know, other people might say four or five or seven, but the three missions are very simply teaching, of course, doing research, of course, and the so-called third mission, it's a, it's a jumble of different things. So one of those things is to involve a, a society in a conversation. So a conversation that has to be accessible also for the general audiences, so not too technical, not too strictly disciplinary. Um, and, and also a conversation that uh, is uh, in, as much as possible to try to, under, to listen to. So not only preach, to an audience, not only you know ex cathedra to give a lecture, but also try to listen to the concerns of the people uh, to which we are talking to, and therefore something like Biennale or the Festival of Technology last year, um, we always always strived to keep in every meeting some time of interaction with the audience, and we're going to do the same this time. It's everything online, and we thought also the technical level logistical level to make sure that every single meeting will have some time for the interaction and to listen to the audience and try to have a, at least some sort, a little bit of conversation. So definitely it's connected to my thinking with universities. And I think it's, uh, it's um, especially in, in an age, you know, we spent four years talking about post-truth or, you know, thinking about what was the role of science in democracy. I think universities have a special role and a special duty to try to, to, to give uh, uh, citizens uh, in a democracy, uh, their expert knowledge, um, knowing what are the limits of this expert knowledge, because we all know that science that is not true to with a capital T, it's, uh, it's more complex than that. But definitely we have to try, even though it's difficult, and even though sometimes uh, the political landscape can become very, very antagonistic and very complicated. Thank you for that really wonderful and comprehensive answer. Juan Carlos, um, my final question for you before you sign off is, what are the ways that people in the network of centers can collaborate with um, the Nexus Center or participate in the festival? So it sounds like everything is online, which is really wonderful. I do hope that you'll share information with the network of centers and invite them to encourage and encourage them to attend to the extent that some of the sessions are open, but what are other ways that you see potential for collaboration? Oh, well, I mean, there is so much wealth right now in the network of centers, uh, so many centers that uh, are doing amazing stuff and so many centers actually to that, that we are still hoping to know better what they do, how they do it, what's their focus, what's their, their interest. So the potential for collaboration is huge and um, we are completely open. So if anybody has an idea, has a, see something we're doing and they would like to just even just have a conversation like we are doing right now, we're completely available and interested in doing that. And regarding Biennale, the next edition will be in 2022. Um, and we, we deeply hope that it's going to be a more normal event compared to this year. And so that could be also an opportunity to meet in person. We were hoping to do that for this edition 
unfortunately it didn't go that well but in two years time it, the next biennale could be a place where also at least some people from the network of centers could come to torino and have a physical meeting together excellent well thank you so much for this really wonderful conversation Juan carlos and thank you for thank joining you, today very excited to have you my pleasure Omar. thank you as always bye-bye so,